Ezekiel chapter number 18. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, Inspiration again. What mean ye? That ye used the proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, and this is what the people were saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. Fathers eat something, but the effect comes upon the children. What they're saying is, well, our fathers did this. God, why are you doing it to us? That's what they're saying. As I live, saith the Lord God, you shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. Stop blaming your fathers. Behold, that's what psychiatrists are teaching people today. Blame your mom. Blame your dad. Blame the neighborhood you grew up. Blame the teacher. Blame the priest. Behold, all souls are mine. Oh. Your soul belongs to God. For the Jews. He's talking to Jews. He paid for them. By the Passover lamb. By bringing them out of Egypt. Those Jewish people are his by payment. Especially much more payment when he came as Lord Jesus Christ and died for them. Acts 20.28. 20, God's blood paid the price. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. Both of you are mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. You know God just told me without going any further in this chapter? Stop blaming your fathers. You've got your problems. Your fathers had problems. you got problems. You know what the problem's called? It's not called this in psychiatry. It's called sin. Don't call it grapes. Call it sin. For all have sinned. Come to shore of glory of God. Alright. Number one. Individual. But if a man be just. And do that which is lawful and right. And has not eaten upon the mountains. What's wrong with eating on the mountain? If, if I gathered my family. If we put through the mountains. Had a dinner. Would that be anything wrong? No. But would have been the mountains. The high places. From Jeremiah 1. All the way to Ezekiel 18. They're going to worship gods. They're going to have a fellowship dinner before the gods. Oh, sorry. Neither has lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel. There's that idol's idolatry again. Neither has he defiled his neighbor's wife. Adultery. That's the tenth commandment. Neither has come near a ministrous woman. That was a violation of the law. She was to be separated during her time. Now notice verses 6 and 7, 8. They're all based upon works. This is not New Testament salvation. These works for a New Testament Christian would be a character, not salvation. You would be a fine Christian if you did not go to another woman that wasn't yours. You would be a respectable man. But it wouldn't be, you know, why would I allow you to uh, enter my gates in 2015? Well, I didn't commit adultery. So what? And he and has not oppressed any, but has restored to the debtor his pledge, something a man has given, collateral, has spoiled none by violence, has given his bread to the hungry and has covered the, na the naked with a garment. All works. He that has not given forth upon usury, and in the law of usury was to a Jew to a Jew, he was allowed to charge Gentiles, but not other Jews. Neither had taken any increase that would be uh, penalty. A reverse interest that has withdrawn his hand from iniquity has executed true judgment between man and man has walked in my statute and has kept my judgment to deal truly he is just in the Old Testament he shall surely live saith the Lord God that would have been Job that would have been the rich young ruler 
Can you do all those things as today? The Bible only mentions two men that ever really did it all. Number two guy. If he, the man in verses 5 through 9 who lived right, if he beget a son that is a robber, it's one of the commandments, and sheddeth of blood, murderer, one of the commandments, and that doeth the like to any one of these things, okay, here's a list of things coming, and that doeth not any of those duties, but even has eaten upon the mountains, other gods, and defiled his neighbor's wife, adultery. Look at all the Ten Commandments being broken. And has oppressed the poor and needy, and has spoiled by violence, and has not restored the pledge, and has lifted up his eyes to the idols, and has committed abomination, has given forth upon usury to a fellow Jew, and has taken increase from another Jew, shall he then live? He shall not live. He has done all these abominations. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon his head. But be upon him. Now a lot of these laws right here that he has broken by the law, he was to be stoned. He was to receive capital punishment. But the question is, well, they weren't practicing capital punishment as much and all that. So what if this guy lived to be 90 years old? Well, shall he live? Have eternal life. When this guy dies, he's not going to die in pleasure. He's not going to rest in peace. Now, lo, number three. If he begat a son that seeth all his father's sins, which he hath done. Now, this guy who has done wrong begets a son. And considereth and doeth not such like. He looks at his father and says, you know what? I am not. You know what this story of chapter 18 is? This is the story of the kings of Israel. You get a wicked king, then you get a son that did right. Then his son would come up and do wrong. And you get a couple wrong kings. You get a king that did right. And yet they had a foundation of the kinghood. Saul who did wrong and David who did right. Uh, all his father's sins which he had done and considereth and doeth not such a lie. He, he does right. That has not eaten upon the mountain. Need has lifted up his eyes to the idol. The house of Israel which not defiled his neighbor's wife. He's doing right by works. Neither has oppressed any, has not withholden the pledge, neither has spoiled by violence, but has given his bread to the hungry, and has covered the naked with his... He's doing what his grandfather did. You want to say the fathers have eaten... What about your grandpa? He did right. You didn't go far as grandpa... You're just using your father because he was a wicked example. What about grandpa? He did right. And has taken off the hand, uh, has taken off his hand for the poor that has not received usury nor increase, has executed my judgment, has walked in my statutes. He shall not die for the iniquity of his father. He shall surely live. As for his father, Verses 10 through 13. Because he cruelly oppressed, spoiled his brother by violence, and did that brother Jew, that did which is not good among his people, the Jews, lo, even he shall die in his iniquity. Yet say ye, why does not the son bear the iniquity for the father? It goes back to the fathers have eaten the sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. Why can't I blame Grandpa? Why can't I blame Dad? Why can't I blame my mom? Why can't I blame Adam? When the son has done that which is lawful and right, and has kept all my statutes, has done them, he shall surely live. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Even in the time of Abraham's bosom, it says that the angels carried Lazarus off into Abraham's bosom. In the New Testament, it says, absent from the body. We just close our eyes and we open our eyes. For them will be Abraham's bosom. To us, we're with the Lord. We really never die. The flesh dies, but not us. 
The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Whatever my dad has done for sins will not be charged to me. I will not have to face my dad's sins. But I'll have to bear my own sin. Now, well, we won't. We'll just, this is salvation we're talking about. We can go in further, but we won't go there. A man will burn in hell for his own sins, not what your parents, your grandparents, or Adam or Eve did. Because you are a sinner. What do you do with those sins will depend on your internal being. I have put my sins on the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am saved. Someone who does not put their sins upon the Lord Jesus Christ today, they are not saved. Their sins will be upon them at the judgment. But if the wicked shall turn from all his sins, here's a guy who's already wicked. No matter where he started, that he has committed and keep all my statutes works and do that which is lawful and right works he shall surely live he shall not die go right off to Abraham's bosom there is a chance in the Old Testament salvation if you are wrong you could get right with God except for murder and except for uh, adultery all his transgressions that he has committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. He goes off to Abraham's bosom and waits for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to cleanse him completely. It won't be mentioned, but it's not forgotten yet, unto the finished work of Jesus Christ. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord? God, does God really... Love killing people and send them to hell. And not that he should return from his ways and live. That's repentance right there. God wants you to repent and get right. He does not want you to die and be judged for hell. But when the righteousness turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, Old Testament, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he has done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he has trespassed, in his sin that he has sinned, in them shall he die. That's Old Testament. Christ has not died on the cross. And if you die in your sins in the Old Testament, you die in your sins and face judgment of God. And you really don't know. Because there were three times a year that the males were supposed to come. What you, would you do when you sinned when you didn't bring an offering? It's all your heart condition. But in the Old Testament did not have assurance of salvation. In the Old Testament, you could lose your salvation. So wouldn't you think uh, religions would run to Ezekiel 18:24? They say, aha, look, you can lose it. Yet, ye say, the way the Lord is not equal. Imagine him saying that. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, and dieth in them for his iniquity that has done, shall he die. You die in the state that you are in. Again, when a wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he has committed, repentance, and doeth that which is right, I mean lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. I didn't save my soul. Jesus Christ saved my soul. See the difference? For by faith, by for by oh boy, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved the faith, not of yourself. Least any man should boast. 
We are saved by Jesus Christ. The Old Testament, he was saved by what he did, what God prescribed by the law, a doing. But he was still, like I say, and keep saying, they didn't go to heaven when they died. They went to Abraham's bosom. They were, they left Abraham's bosom after the finished work of Jesus Christ. I am saved by Jesus Christ and nothing and no one and not me. Because he considered it and turns away from his transgressions. Mark that down as a definition of repentance. That he has committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. That is the definition. You consider who you are. And a salvation without repentance. A salvation of no considereth. A salvation of no turning away. And no salvation of not realizing what you've committed is no salvation at all even in the Old Testament the Old Testament salvation and the t salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ rest assured you better consider who you are you better acknowledge who you are and it better be that you know you have done it not mom not dad as this chapter started off you can't walk up to God and say, okay, God, I'm sorry for the sins that my mom made me do. You're not saved. Well, Lord, I'm in the predicament I am because you allowed Adam and Eve to do that. I'm sorry for that. No. You, re you know, we keep talking about today today don't look at tomorrow don't look at tomorrow look at today what are you today who are you today and that's who you bring yourself to God today are you a sinner consider what you've done wrong today repent of what you've done today Acknowledge that you have committed what you've done today. Yet saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel. What's so unequal about that? Let's say I let's say I, I lied. Alright, my boss made me lie to keep my job. Alright? I can blame my boss. But what does God expect me to do? With or without salvation. God expects me to tell the truth going to the Bible. I am not to bear false witness if I'm an Old Testament Jew. It's not my boss fault. I'm to stand up and speak the truth. Who cares what the boss thinks? I'll lose my job. Well, you know. Well, Lord, I told a lie. Who made you tell a lie? Lord, I just told a lie. That's just plain and simple. There's, there's no other. No other. I lied, God, and that's a sin. I need to confess it. That's what God wants. You know what Israel wanted? My father made me do it. It was the way my mother brought me up. See, they're overlooking their sins, blaming someone else. Adam did that the very first time he dealt with God. She made me do it. Okay, Eve, the snake made me do it. Did you ever read of them repenting? There is nowhere recorded in the Bible that Adam nor Eve repented. They blamed. And yeah, the Israelites, the Jews, are not repenting. They're blaming. Back to Genesis chapter 3. When you come to God, you can't have the blame game. You step up. Adam, what would you do? I ate the fruit. Why? I just ate the fruit, Lord. Anything else to say? Yeah, I'm sorry. That's what Adam needed to see. Eve, what'd you do? I ate the fruit and gave it to my husband. Why and why? Lord, I ate the fruit and I should have not given it to him. Lord, I'm sorry. That would have been it. Cain, where's your brother? I don't know. Cain, where's your brother? Uh, God, uh... Cain, where's your brother? I killed him, Lord. Why? I killed him. David, yes. 
Whose woman is that? No. The woman washing is that? David? She's Uriah's wife. What? Who? She's Uriah's wife. Peter? Oh, Lord, I know. Peter? Lord, I got a big mouth. Why? Lord, I got a big mouth. Why can't we do that? Styley? Yeah, Lord. What? That guy is taking too long at the red light. Uh, Styley? Lord, I'm impatient. Why? I'm impatient. Why can't we do that? We blame the guy in front of us because he's not moving quick enough. We blame the person in the checkout line because they're not fast enough. We blame the person because they didn't do their job. We blame the person because of what? We need to acknowledge our sin. They will have to acknowledge their sin. There's no blame in Ezekiel 18. And they're blaming. And there's no repentance. And then they're turning around and saying, God, that guy gets right and he lives. That guy does wrong and he dies. That's, God, you're unequal. Why? Because, God, we want to continue to do wrong. And we want you to bless us. You see what they're saying? You see what they're doing? We can do whatever we want, God, but we can blame someone else, and you're going to love us and like us. Wait a minute. God, you say, wait a minute. That guy repents, and that guy gets right. He's going to live. But if I live in my sins and blame other people, I'm going to die without life. That's not fair. You see what their heart condition is? There is no repentance. I want to blame. I want the blame. I want someone to take the credit for this. That's wickedness. Are not my ways unequal? Are not your ways unequal? They want heaven to be filled with sinners like them. Would you like to go to heaven like that? Would you like to go to heaven with a bunch of people like this? In chapter 18. Long before you know if we went to heaven with these people in 18, they'd be blaming you for something. Long before eternity ends, which won't end. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways. I'm going to judge every Jew, and I'm going to judge you by that individual Jew. I'm going to judge David, not as Saul, not as Solomon, and not as Noah. And I'm going to judge Eber, not as Lot, not as Abraham, not as Noah. I'm going to judge Jonah as Jonah and not anybody else. And I'm going to judge you as you and nobody else. I'm not even going to look at who your parents are. I'm not even going to look at who your wife is. I'm not going to look at who your children are. I'm going to look at you. How does that sound? Say if the Lord God, that's Jehovah. I'm going, to, I'm going to sign that with Jehovah, Lord God, Jesus, and God together. Think God's not serious? How do you do it? Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. There's another definition in this chapter of repentance. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. So what do you do if somebody says, well, I said this prayer and they keep going back. God loves us Sod sodomites too. We're gay and happy. Do you think they're saved according to that verse? According to the definition of repentance? Well, I'm saved. I love my beer. Really? Didn't Jesus turn water to wine? Did you turn from your sins? Well, Lord, I turn back sometimes. Are you sorry? Do you really want to turn back? Or are you letting the flesh win? Are you battling between spirit and flesh? Ephesians says. If you are battling and you lose some battles, but you get back up and pick up your weapon and, and try to win that battle, try to win that fight, take that hill again, you may roll down it again. Are you putting up a repentance battle? These are people who... 
I'm going to enjoy in it no matter what God wants. But if you're fighting. So iniquity shall be your ruin. Ruin is a word described for hell. How you describe it? There's many words. How about ruin? That's a good definition of hell. Ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions. Get away from them. Throw them away. That's what it's saying. Throw away. Which ye have transgressed. Which ye have transgressed. Not your dad. Not your teacher. What ye have. Now that ye is speaking about a group of people. Because he's speaking to Jews. But individually would be thee or thy. Put it on yourself speaking to the people. He's talking to the nation as corporate. He's not talking to uh, Germans. He's not talking to Babylonians. He's not talking to Assyrians. He's not talking to Egyptians. He's talking to Israel, one people. And make ye a new heart. And make you a new heart. And a new spirit, new life, new spirit, new creature. For why will ye die? O house of Israel. Now as far as your question. Have I any desire at all that the wicked should die? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that died. Boy God gave a long answer to 23 by 24 to 20, 32. They asked. Have I any pleasure at all that the, that the wicked should die? Say the Lord God. And verse, to finish the verse 25, 24. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32 is the answer. And it finally ends with, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth. Have I any pleasure at all in the, in the wicked should die? The answer is no, but with a long explanation. Let me tell you what the meaning of the wicked is before I answer that question. Because you think you're right. And you're not. Saith the Lord God. Wherefore, again, turn yourself and live ye. You're not doing right. You're not doing right. We see in this chapter blame and repentance. 